everybody. It's time for Children's Church. <music> Good morning, and thank you for joining us today for Children's Church. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for every boy and girl and family that's watching, and I pray that you would just help us all to participate in worshiping you today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, we are going to do our Bible verse, and our Bible verse, of course, comes from the Bible. This particular one comes from Psalm. 139.14. Would you put it up there, Mr. Monk? Our Bible verse says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Okay. We've been talking about that all month, and this is really our last week for this particular verse for a while, so I want you to make it your best. Okay? So stand up. We're going to point to ourselves, and we do one arm up, the other arm up, and then we clap. Here we go. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139.14. Good job. Okay, let's do it again. And this time, let's be in slow motion. Are you ready? Here we go. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139.14. One more time the real way. Here we go. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139.14. I bet you have that memorized by now. I'll see you after our songs and Bible stories. My friends, we all are different. God made us special and unique. Yeah, we come from different places. We all have different faces. There's no one in the world like me. Just like a rainbow, we are so beautiful. We are not the same. We are not the same. We are all wonderfully wonderful. On my head, God said each one he counted. I think that means he cares a lot. A lot, lot. Uh. And I know it doesn't matter. Walking or in a wheelchair, I am his child and I am loved. So I trust him no matter what.
are not the same We are all wonderfully, wonderfully made We are not the same question. How many of you have looked in a mirror before? Oh wow! So many of you! We look in the mirror when we brush our teeth, when we brush our hair, but today I have to look in a mirror to do a self-portrait for school. That means I have to draw a picture of myself. These pictures are going to be hung up in the school hallway, so it has to be my best. Okay, to draw myself portrait, I have to look in the mirror and draw what I see. I have an oval face. I have two eyes. And a nose. Now I have to draw my hair. That's going to be hard. I have a lot of hair. Who? Who? It's Ollie! Hello, Peyton. Who? Who? Looking in the mirror, are you? Hi, Ollie. I'm doing a self portrait for class, and I'm trying to draw every hair on my head. You have a lot of hairs. It's true. I know someone who can count them all. Who? Who? Just listen to this story. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. Follow me through. Who? I've got a Bible story for me and you. Hola, friends. I'm Luis the Handyman. I'm cleaning up with this brush. It's so important because it keeps my workbench clean. <laughs> Look at all these bristles. There are so many, I don't think I could count them all. That reminds me of today's true story from the Bible. Would you like to help me build it? Great, let's put it on the story fence. Hammers up, little builders. Ready? Uno, dos, tres, hammer! Great job, little helpers. You can put your hammers down. Now, we just need our story tools. Yep, we have everything we need. We have been learning that God made everything in the whole wide world including you. It's true. God made you, and you are so important to Him. You are so important to God 
that he knows how many hairs are on your head. Huh. Do you think we could count how many hairs are on this person's head? Let's count. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ugh. Oh, wow. There are so many hairs on his head. I don't think we could ever count them all. Hmm. You know, I've never even thought about counting how many hairs are on my head. Oh, but God knows how many there are because I am so important to him. And so are wonderful you. In fact, you are important to God no matter where you are. You are important to God at the... What do you think this is? <laughs> That's right, the playground. You are important to God when you're at the playground. Let's do another one. You are important to God at the... That's right, the doctor's office. You are important to God when you are at the doctor's office. Let's do one more. You are important to God. Ha <laughs> ha ha, you got it. You are important to God when you are asleep on your bed at night. <laughs> you are important to God no matter where you are. And you are also important to God no matter what you do. You are important to God if you are singing loud. You are important to God if you are reading a book. You are important to God if you are waiting at the end of the line. You are important to God even if you're doing nothing at all. You are important to God no matter where you are and no matter what you do. You are so important to God that he sent his son, Jesus, to show you how to live and to be your friend forever. <laughs> I am so glad that we are important to God and that he made each one of us wonderful. Hey there, Ollie. Tell me, who made you wonderful? God made me wonderful. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, who made you wonderful? God made me wonderful. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. See you next time. Adios! So there's your story, and it's all true. You're important to God, no matter what you do. Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Who? Who? Wow! It's so cool to know that God knows everything about us, even the numbers of hairs we have on our head. We're that important to him. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say got it. Get it? Got it. Good. I can't possibly draw every hair on my head, but it's cool to know that God knows them. No matter how this self-portrait turns out, I'm still important to God. See you next time. Bye. am fearfully and wonderfully made Psalm 139 14 I am fearfully and wonderfully made Psalm 139 14 
Hi there, I'm Jacob. All month long, we've been talking about love. Love is showing others how much they matter to you. But how do you show others how much they matter to you? That, my friends, is a mystery. Oh. That sounded scary. But mysteries don't have to be scary. Some of my favorite books are mysteries. They can get really tense and stressful, but there's always that moment in the end when the detective solves the case. You will find the guilty party hiding out in the school. What school, you might ask? Elementary, my dear Watson. I searched all over the neighborhood, Mrs. Jenkins, but I couldn't find your missing parakeet. My bet is he's been in his cage all along, or my name isn't. Wikipedia Jones, the item used to chase Madame Lafarge away was none other than the spatula. All that's fine for a book, but it's a little different when you have a mystery in real life. In today's story, we'll hear about Abraham and Sarah and how God told them to leave home. Where would they go? Well, that, my friends, would be a little mystery. Too close. Okay. Mm. All right. I'll see you guys in a few. Just. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Genesis, chapters 12 and 15. When Adam and Eve turned away from God and broke the loving rule God had given them, sin had entered the world. People no longer had a perfect relationship with God or each other. I wish you weren't my brother. Their family grew. Tribes and cities began to fill the earth, but almost no one followed God. People looked out for themselves instead of each other. During this time, though, one man did walk faithfully with God. Noah. Yes, God? People have filled the earth with their harmful acts. I'm going to put an end to it. God instructed Noah to build a huge boat. I'm going to bring a flood on this earth, but I'm going to make my covenant with you. God told Noah to bring his family and two of each animal aboard the boat so that they would be saved. Then rains came and washed over the earth for 40 days. And when the waters finally receded and new life began to grow again, Noah and his family returned to dry ground. Thank you, Lord. Then God set a rainbow in the sky and promised to never again flood the earth. Noah's family grew, and once more, people began to fill the earth. Few of them listened to God, though. They had no room for God's love in their hearts, wishing only to put themselves first. In the midst of all this, God still had a plan to show deep, deep love to people. He chose a man named Abram who lived in the land of Haran with his wife, Sarai. Abram. Who, who is it? It must have been a surprise for Abram to discover that the God of the entire universe wanted to speak with him. But Abram couldn't deny the compelling, loving voice that called him. Go from your country, your people, and your father's family. Go to the land I will show you. But I'm 75 years old. Why would I leave everything that I know? I will make you a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great. You will be a blessing to others. All nations on earth will be blessed because of you. God wanted to tell a story through Abram's family so that people across all time could see God's love for them. But Abram must have been filled with questions. Sarai and I don't have children yet. We're old. <laughs> uh... How can we have a large family? What will we do in the new land? How will we live there? God gave no answers, except for God's presence, full of peace and love. All right, God. We'll go. Abram and Sarai, later called Abraham and Sarah, packed up all they had, chests and boxes, platters and blankets, sheep and cattle and goats. 
Oh, Abram, I hope you know what you've heard. God called us. I can't tell you how, but I, I know. His voice, it was so full of love. <laughs> but me have a baby. Just look at my wrinkles. So Abraham and Sarah and their whole household set out on a very long journey. They covered almost a thousand miles until they reached the land of Canaan. Here, this is it. Maybe so, but I'm still not sure about the baby part. The land opened up before them, wide and rolling. Abram found a tree in Moray that branched overhead like a sheltering roof. God, we're here. We came all this way. What now? I will give this land to your family who comes after you. Thank you. I just needed to hear that again. Carefully, Abraham piled up stones to form an altar in honor of God. This will stand as a reminder of all that you've promised, Lord. Over the years, Abraham and Sarah made their home in this new land. Abraham made some wise choices and some poor ones. But still, God blessed them with some very good things. I won't say this necklace is in beautiful, Abraham, but what good is silver and gold if we've got no one to give it to? You know, God promised us a family. Years ago. You really think I can have a child now? I know it seems impossible, but... That night, the Lord appeared to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid. I am like a shield to you. I am your very great reward. I know, Lord, but we still don't have any children. When I die, everything you've given us will go to a servant. The Lord led Abraham out of the tent. The night sky stretched overhead. Look up at the sky. Abraham craned his neck to look up. Stars wheeled in the night, vivid points of light. They spun out in layer after layer, reaching into the vast depths of space. Count the stars if you can. Abraham's breath caught in his throat. I can't. No one could. As many stars as filled the sky, that's how many children will be born into your family. God's voice was deep and sure, filled with the same love that had drawn Abraham and Sarah from their home years before. Yes. Yes, God. I believe you. It would still be years to come, but God in love would keep that promise to Abraham and Sarah. It was the first step in a plan to show love not just to their family, but to the entire world. Abraham's life was full of mysteries, but he didn't let that bother him. God told Abraham to leave home, and Abraham went, even though he didn't know what God had in store. God promised Abraham the whole world would be blessed because of his family, and Abraham trusted God, even though he didn't know for sure if the promise would come true. For us living today, God's promise to Abraham is no mystery. We know that it came true because thousands of years after Abraham, one of his family members was born in the town of Bethlehem. Jesus. God always had a plan to show love to the world by sending Jesus. You know what that means? It means God still has a plan to show love to the world. God has a plan to make things right. That's true no matter what's going on in your life or in the world. And you can be a part of that plan by trusting God and sharing God's love with others. You can help solve the case. If you suspect a person needs something, Offer to help them. When a neighbor's in need, you can get to work. If someone is in danger, speak up and be on their side. The one thing to remember today is this. God has a plan to show love to the world. It's no mystery. You can trust God no matter what. Well, that's all I have for you this month. We'll be back next month with something brand new. You want to know what it is? Shh. Sorry. It's a mystery. See you next time.
you again for joining us today. Have a wonderful week. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you again for all the many blessings that you give us. I pray that you be with each boy and girl this week, that you would go with them and help them with whatever problems that they have along the way. Thank you again for all your many blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Of course, I have a riddle for you. What has two legs, but it can't walk? Do you know Mr. Monk? He does, because he cheated again. What has two legs and can't walk? A pair of pants. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.